All right, good evening and welcome. We are so excited to have you joining us this evening um, for the Cache Virtual College Fair. Just a few housekeeping items before I turn it over to our presenter. Um, first of all, you have the ability to ask questions during this session, so you can use that Q&A function. So um, if there are any questions you want answered, please make sure you just use that throughout the presentation. Your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. So again, just that Q&A function will be the best way for you to communicate with us. This is the last slate of sessions happening this evening, but there are additional sessions on future dates that you can sign up for by visiting strivescan.com slash cache. And that is also where you will be able to access recordings of this presentation as well as all of the other ones. So um, without further ado, we are going to be hearing from the Massachusetts Maritime Academy, and I'm going to turn it over to our presenter, Catherine O'Brien. Hi everybody, my name is Catherine or Callie um, O'Brien. I am one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. I'm going to take a quick second just to share my screen um, and then I will hop right into the presentation. Please, please, please ask any questions that you might have, um, just throw them right into that question and answer spot. All right, so um, this right here is an overview of our entire campus. We are located um, right on the Cape Cod Canal in Massachusetts. Um, for anybody familiar with Massachusetts, we're about an hour south of Boston and about 45 minutes to an hour from Providence, Rhode Island. Um, we are on our own little peninsula here. Um, you'll see that this is really our whole campus. We're pretty small, about 55 acres. Um, Anywhere that you need to be on campus, you can pretty much get there from, um, you know, within a five minute walk from the dorms to the gym um, is sort of the furthest spot. Um, and you'll notice that we do have a 540 foot training ship on campus. Some quick facts, a couple of which I just went over, um, our distance from Boston. Uh, we currently have about 1700 undergraduate students, 1800 students total. Um, that extra hundred is, um, comprised of our graduate students. They are not on campus. Um, they take classes at a satellite location in an executive format. We are a public university of Massachusetts and we are one of six state maritime academies. Um, so there are a few other maritime academies. Um, we all have our similarities and we all have some differences. We offer a STEM-based education with a regimented campus lifestyle. Um, we'll get into the regiment a little bit more um, in just a minute. We also have 15 Division Three varsity athletic teams. We have club and intramural sports available as well, um, as well as non-athletic clubs. In terms of academics, we are very specified in what we offer in, uh, for our majors. We only offer seven different programs for our students. So um, the two biggest programs are marine engineering and marine transportation. Those are the two programs that we were founded on back in 1891. Um, same with any of the other state maritime academies. Those are gonna be the two um, programs that get, our, get us our classification as a maritime academy and, and sort of that special mission college. And those two programs prepare graduates for a career at sea. So whether you're working on a cruise ship, a tugboat, um, an oil rig, tanker, whatever it might be, either as a deck or an engineering officer, keeping those ships running. We also offer facilities engineering, which is very much um, a hands-on engineering program, um, but shoreside. Um, energy systems engineering is our smallest program, and that has a focus on renewable energy engineering. International oh, emergency management, um, which I would tell you has probably been the most popular program in the last couple of years, which has a big focus on um, first response, law enforcement. Um, you know, in the middle of the COVID pandemic, we have a lot of graduates that are um, on the front lines, doing hospital planning, um, working with the Federal Emergency Management Agency. So a lot of different directions that you can go within that program. We also offer an international maritime business program, which ties in all of your business basics, plus how it um, pertains to the maritime industry. And then we also offer a marine science, safety, and environmental protection program, which has some parallels with a marine biology course. We operate on a learn, do, learn philosophy. So we really want our students to get that classroom time, get that little bit of lecture-based knowledge, and then go apply it. 
Um, so we will have you out as early as the winter after your first semester doing experiential learning, um, which we'll get a little bit more into. Um, all majors, regardless of what program you're in, will have some sort of experiential learning, whether it is um, out on our training ship or maybe it is um, in Florida, maybe you're in Costa Rica, a few different options for what you might be doing. All of our programs have a STEM focus, so science, technology, engineering, and math. And through these programs, you can look for careers on land or at sea. Um, so as I mentioned, these are the two programs that we were founded on, marine engineering and marine transportation. Not only do you get your Bachelor of Science degree with these majors, but you will also um, sit for your U.S. Coast Guard license. And so that's a series of exams that you will take your senior year. And that's really your ticket to go out and work on a ship. So um, of course, your bachelor's degree is super important. Um, but without that license, you really can't go work in the industry. Um, if you're in engineering, you'll be working in the ship's engine room, keeping all of the systems up and operational. So um, your potable water um, on a ship, we don't have bottles of Poland Springs, we make our own fresh water um, in terms of your heating and ventilation. Uh, all of those things are really maintained by the engineering department, your propulsion, all of that. And then transportation is going to be um, a deck officer and really you're working on the navigation side of things. So for anybody that has a driver's license, who took driver's ed, you had to study for your test. Um, imagine that I would say about 50 fold um, when you might be on a 500 to 1000 foot ship, um, but you learn all of the different rules of the road and um, coastal navigation, things like that. So essentially you're driving the ship. For graduates through these programs, they are very likely to work on ships, but it's not a requirement. Um, we find that for the most part, students who go through these two programs um, usually put their license to use at least for a little while. Um, some do, some do not. Um, for the folks that do, a lot of times you find that they ship out for maybe eight to 10 years and then they get ready to sort of settle down. They wanna come home and they will transition shoreside. So that is absolutely a possibility. Um, with these programs, you will go on sea term um, and also do commercial shipping. Uh, so in the first photo, you could have seen the 540 foot training ship. Our students will go out for six weeks at a time on the TS Kennedy. Um, it's an awesome experience. We go out typically during January and February. Um, one of the nice things about leaving Massachusetts in those winter months is that we head for warmer waters. Um, so you might be going through the Panama Canal and doing an equator crossing. You might be in Puerto Rico or St. Thomas, um, Curacao, Barbados, Tortola. Those are all frequent ports of call for us. Um, and so you do get some liberty when you go to those places. That being said, a lot of times you will hear folks refer to it as a cruise. Um, if any of you have been on a cruise, I personally have not, but it is it is not a pleasure cruise. It is not the Royal Caribbean. Um, you're taking classes, you're standing watches, um, and you're learning all about the day-to-day -day functioning of being on a vessel. So um, our students really keep everything up and operational. And then commercial shipping is an internship experience. So that takes place typically during your junior year. Um, and instead of shipping out with us on the TS Kennedy, you will go out and you will ship out within the industry. So you could be working for six weeks on tugboats in um, Norfolk, Virginia. You could be um, working with cruise ships, Royal Caribbean, um, island hopping in Hawaii. You could be offshore supply vessels, which a lot of times down in the Gulf of Mexico where we have oil rigs. Um, we have students that will in turn um, or graduates who will work on what we call OSVs, offshore supply vessels. Um, all of those things are possibilities. You can really tailor it to what you think you might wanna do once you hit the industry after graduation. So this is a photo of the Kennedy. Um, we do offer some options for students to follow along when we do go out on C term. And this year, our C term will be in the spring. We were not able to leave during January and February due to COVID. Um, so our schedule this year is a little bit, a um, little bit different. So if you are interested, you could certainly sign up for the follow the voyage. It's right on our website and you will follow cadet blogs and the captain's blog, see where the ship is, uh, what type of training the students are doing. Um, we will have lab training, deck and engine watches. You will learn um, how to perform shipboard maintenance, um, as well as we perform Coast Guard drills at least once a week. 
And everything that we have on campus, we do have on board the Kennedy in a, albeit much uh, condensed version, but it is, um, we have a gym, we have a library, we have the cafeteria, which we refer to as a mess deck. You'll find that we have very different names um, for everything really on board um, the ship. Um, there is a sick bay with nurses and a doctor on board. So if anything were to happen, um, and then there are a ton of different classrooms. So everything is really condensed on board the Kennedy. Um, as I mentioned, some of the, the typical ports that we visit, um, Ecuador and Panama, the Panama Canal Transit is usually in every four year trip that we make. Um, so if you were lucky enough to be on one of those, I will tell you it is an incredible, um, incredible once in a lifetime experience. Facilities, engineering and energy systems. Um, with facilities, you design and oversee how systems within a building work together. Um, so very much, similar to the marine engineering program, um, but again, just not on a ship. The energy systems engineering program focuses more on design and implementation of systems that distribute electrical power. Um, it could be focusing on management of large plants, systems, various equipment, both focus on environmental needs and energy management and production. Um, all three engineering programs, I will tell you, are very cross-disciplinary, so you'll learn mechanical, electrical, industrial, um, and through any of the engineering programs, you can pick up an energy management minor if that was something that you were interested in. And Energy Systems is our smallest program. Currently, we only accept 24 students into that program each year. Emergency management, as I previously mentioned, is one of the more popular programs in the last several years. Um, in, in many ways, I think that is just due to the nature um, of our society and the things that are happening in the world. Um, there's a lot of job security in that. Um, so it involves disaster planning, preparedness, and response. You can really choose what area you would like to focus on. We have graduates that work in private and public sector. Uh, you could work for the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Any state has an emergency management agency. And then there are local emergency management positions as well. Usually a small town, um, somebody might help hold that as well as, um, you know, the fire chief. And they sort of wear a couple of different hats. But when you get into bigger cities, there are uh, full-time professionals that are responsible for emergency management and emergency planning. You could work on a town or county board, state transportation, law enforcement has been a very popular um, path for students in the last several years, both at the local and state levels. And then sort of some of the places that you don't necessarily think of, um, business continuity and risk assessment. Um, one of the biggest ones that we've seen and, and talked to graduates about within the last year has been hospital emergency planning um, with surge capacities and everything like that due to COVID. Uh, we actually had a young woman who just graduated. Her first job was um, at a Boston hospital and she was in the master's program for emergency management. And that was her first role was diving into um, sort of capacity planning as a result of the COVID pandemic. And we just added a brand new emergency management simulator to campus that just opened up this past semester. Um, it is unbelievable. I would definitely encourage you if you have an interest in emergency management to take a look at the website. Um, there's a, a virtual tour that you can do and it's an emergency operations center. Um, so we can simulate any type of disaster or event in there and our students get that firsthand response experience. International maritime business um, sort of shows you the business side of the shipping industry. I don't know if any of you have ever thought about where your clothes or your sporting goods or your cell phones or um, a lot of our cars come from, but we import a ton of things within the United States. Uh, we don't make a whole lot here ourselves. And so over 90% of that trade at some point in its journey moves by ship. Um, so looking at the logistics of how that works, looking, um, uh, doing the insurance side of things. I don't know if anybody has followed uh, the disaster that was in this, I shouldn't say disaster, um, but the issue in the Suez Canal uh, this past week with the ship that was stuck. And, and that puts a huge, huge um, strain on our global trade because um, 
we never really think about how those things are moving and where they're moving to or from. And so that's something that our students will, will really dive into. It can be cargo insurance, um, space capacity planning on board those ships or within port or marinas. Um, anytime a ship comes into port, it is pre-planned. Nobody's, you know, kind of coming in on their own schedule. Um, when we're talking about those big shipping ports or, or cruise ship terminals, um, everything there is, is on a schedule and, and, and set out. So it builds your business skills with a unique focus. Um, and then we are, it is an accredited program, which was just recent within the last couple of years. Marine science safety and environmental protection. Um, it takes a practical approach to marine science, um, environmental protection and management. Um, we approach this through research, advocacy, occupational health and safety and environmental law. Um, we do offer a minor in marine biology for students who are interested. There are a ton of different directions that you can take this program. Um, sort of like emergency management, it's just open-ended in, into which direction you wanna go. And we do have an aquaculture lab on campus, which this is a photo of. The students are doing something different every time I go in there, um, whether they've got crustaceans that they're observing, sometimes it's stripers, um, they're working on a little bit of an oyster farm. So it really gives you that firsthand um, experience. And, and that's something that you really can use throughout your four years. And this is something that we just started within the last two years. We have always had graduate programs or for the duration that I've been at the Academy, um, we have three different graduate degrees that we offer, um, emergency management, facilities management, and maritime business management. All three are taught in an executive format. So students actually meet at a satellite location in Waltham, Massachusetts, um, and they meet Friday nights and Saturdays and um, it's every other weekend. So you can you know, be enrolled in your undergraduate degree and do this, or you can be working um, full-time in the workforce and still do this. But we just started offering a four plus one program. So students in their junior year can apply to the graduate program. And so then their senior year, they are starting to take their graduate level courses. Um, fun fact, we can't bill you as an undergrad and a graduate student at the same time. So you really are mostly paying your room and board um, for that satellite location, um, which is great. And um, if everything goes well, you get all those classes done your senior year and you've got about eight months, eight to 10 months left um, after your undergraduate graduation until you also achieve your graduate degree. Um, so it takes about 18 to 20 months. Um, depending on the program and, and sort of just where some of those weekends fall. And you don't have to be um, in a corresponding major. So if you are enrolled in the emergency management program and decide you want to, you know, tie that in with the business management, you can absolutely do that. So the regiment, this is um, one of the places that we are very different. If this creates any questions for you, please feel free to put them in the question and answer. I'm also a graduate of the Academy, so um, I've, I've lived it firsthand and I'm happy to answer any questions. We are a little bit different. Um, a lot of times people see these photos and they think that we're the military, but we are not. Um, we are a regimental school. There's no military obligation unless that's something that you might be interested in, in which case we do have multiple pathways to get you there. Um, the photo that you'll see on the top in the what we call your classroom blacks, that's your everyday uniform. Um, you're going to be wearing that when you are in the mess deck, which is the cafeteria or in classes. Um, you know, if you're swinging over to a, a faculty member's office, you are required to be in uniform. Um, the bottom image is a little bit more of a formal uniform um, during summer months. So that's usually if we have some sort of special ceremony happening on campus. A lot of times we get the question, well, why do you make your students wear a uniform if you are not the military? And more than anything, it is our leadership laboratory or our leadership simulation. Um, it is designed to build character and leadership skills. When you come in as an underclassman, you typically don't know how to wear your uniform or how to march. 
and we task our upperclassmen with training you on that. So they very quickly learn in their junior and senior year um, that being the boss and the instructor is not usually as easy as everybody makes it look. Um, it enhances our academic programming and contributes to career success. So um, with the uniform and the regiment comes a lot of time management and attention to detail, which is huge when you hit the workforce to, to already have those things um, at such a young age, sort of under your belt and under control. One of the things that we uh, also have that I would say enhances the academic programming is for freshmen, we do require mandatory study hours. Um, which I know doesn't sound super attractive, but most students will tell you it's a lifesaver. Um, Monday night or Sunday night through Thursday night, rather, our freshmen have um, from eight to 10 o'clock at night, they are only allowed to be working on their homework. So um, no social media, no cell phone, no phone calls. Um, and that is time to be either in your room studying or working in a group setting, or you can head over to the tutoring center in the library. Um, to get extra help if it's something that you might be looking for. Um, and it's sort of just a way to make sure that your day doesn't get away from you, that you have the time to catch up on everything you need to do. Um, and some students choose to adopt that throughout their four years and others do not, but um, it really is a great way to set up some healthy habits as you're starting your freshman year at college. So who chooses the regiment? Um, this is one of the biggest disclaimers that we will throw out there is, is Mass Maritime is not for everybody. Um, you know, we want you to love the school as much as we do. We want you to be excited about it. Um, but if you don't believe in the regiment or in living that sort of lifestyle, it's a really hard one to fake. Um, so students who thrive in structure, students who know that they perform best with structure, um, even if they don't love it, but they know that that's what they need. Those are the students who tend to do very well when they, they come in and they transition to this lifestyle. Um, common high school extracurriculars, these are some of them, but honestly, we see such a large, wide array. Um, there is no common. Um, JROTC is one, um, Scouts, Sea Cadets, Athletics. Um, but environmental clubs, community service, it can be anything. Um, we have a, a pretty interesting group of, of students, which is awesome. Everybody brings something a little bit different to campus. For anyone who might be interested in commissioning, we have something called um, the Strategic Sealift Midshipman Program, which is a United States Navy commissioning program. It is not a traditional ROTC in that it is designed for students in marine transportation or marine engineering to apply for. Um, and it is geared towards commissioning reserve officers in the merchant marine. So um, you sort of serve a little bit as, as backup. Um, you'll have your two weeks a year that you have to do and you do some extra trainings. Um, there are some active duty billets available. So um, while it is designed to be a reserve program, we do have usually one or two students each year who, who apply for and get an active duty billet within the Navy. Um, we also have an Army ROTC program that is very much your traditional ROTC. Um, so students will commission when they graduate as second lieutenants into the Army Reserves. Um, active duty is also a possibility through the Army Reserve or the Army ROTC program. And the last one that we see pretty commonly is something called MARGRAD and it stands for Maritime Graduate. And that is a Coast Guard commissioning program. Um, most often I would say we probably see students through emergency management or the Marine Science Safety and Environmental Protection Program pursue this route. Um, if anybody is familiar with sort of the more traditional commissioning routes after college, there's something called OCS, which is Officer Candidate School, um, which is usually 16 to 17 weeks. This MARGRAD program, um, takes into account that you've already been at a maritime academy, you already have that regimented experience. And so it takes a 16 or 17 week OCS and it shortens it down to four to five weeks um, for you to get your direct commission into the Coast Guard as an ensign. So while we are regimented and we do have um, sort of a different take on, on some of that lifestyle on campus. We do have more traditional aspects as well. Uh, so we do have division three athletics for men's and women's teams. We have cross country, track and field, sailing, crew, soccer, and lacrosse. Um, for men's teams, football and baseball and women's teams, softball and volleyball. 
We also have a very active student government association. They are responsible for hosting all different types of events. Um, the last year has been a challenge um, with COVID as it has everywhere else, um, but they've done a really great job of setting up some socially distanced events um, and really trying to keep the morale up on campus for the students that are on campus. As previously mentioned, we have club and intramural sports as well as non-athletic clubs. Um, Emory Rice Day is something that is hosted by the Student Government Association and for lack of better terms, it's a giant field day. Um, sort of some carnival type stuff. Uh, usually the National Guard will bring in their obstacle course. There's usually a huge cookout. Um, sometimes it's a rock climbing wall, usually a movie night. One year there's a concert. Um, so it all depends on just really what the students want that year. And um, it's a fun dress down day on campus. So everybody gets to dress in civilian clothes and really hang out and, and have some fun, which is really nice. They also do different pop-up events. So it might be um, apple cider donuts. I just saw for the first time pizza cones um, last semester, which was a cool thing for them to do in the quad. They brought in um, a pizza truck, uh, which was great for a little bit of a COVID distraction. And then there's a student lounge that students are able to use um, when we're not so worried about socially distancing um, that has some retro video games, a uh, couple pool tables, some foosball, um, and then a snack bar. So um, it's really a place a lot of times that you'll find underclassmen hanging out. <clears throat> some of the outcomes for our graduates um, and, and for our students. So our first year retention rate, um, Students returning after that freshman year, sophomore year is about 90%, which we're very proud of. Um, average career placement is about 90% within three to six months of graduation. And that means career track. Um, so getting into your field, going directly on to graduate education or military service, those are all counted in that, that percentage. Um, average starting salary is about $63,000 a year. Some of that will vary dependent on what type of program you're going into. Um, so if you're in the shipping side of things, you'll find that that salary is um, a little bit higher just due to the nature of the work that you're doing. And then our six year graduation rate is 73%, um, which is the highest of all Massachusetts public universities. sort of a, an average profile for our incoming students, the average weighted GPA. And so we do a re recalculation of any transcript we get, we will do a weighted recalculation. Um, average weighted GPA is about a 3.1. Average SAT is a 1050 to an 1100. Average ACT 22 or 23. If you're looking at the energy systems engineering program, those numbers will be a little bit higher. We are always looking for students who um, have taken strong classes in their math and science curriculum. So, um, you know, if you're a, a junior in, you're in Algebra 2, we'd love to see you take pre-calc that senior year, um, but really to, to keep up with that. Um, and as previously mentioned, the energy systems engineering due to its size and the emergency management program um, due to just the volume of applications are the most competitive programs to get into currently. So this was new for us this past year. We are now on the Common App. We also have our internal application on our website. Um, we don't have a preference as to which you use, um, whichever one you're more comfortable with. With the application, we will require your high school transcript, a personal essay, two letters of recommendation, SAT or ACT scores. They were um, optional this year. The jury is still out on whether or not they will be optional moving forward. Um, but we will release that information as soon as we have it. We have an early action deadline of November 15th. Um, it's not binding. Early action is not binding. It just means you're going to hear from us sooner. There's no commitment needed. Um, if you have everything in by November 15th, chances are you will hear from us within three to four weeks. Um, priority deadline is February 15th. And then the final deadline for fall admission is April 15th. Costs and scholarships, um, I am the out-of-state recruiter. Um, so this has sort of the out-of-state numbers. If you are in-state, it starts at about 24,000. Um, out-of-state comes up to about $40,000 a year for tuition fees, room and board. 
Um, keep in mind there are additional costs with your C term or experiential learning. Um, the first year cost of your C bag, which um, probably sounds like a foreign language, but your C bag will contain all of the uniforms that you need. So those classroom blacks that we saw, um, it'll have your shoes, your boiler suits, which are coveralls. It'll have all of your um, uniform necessities um, really to get you throughout your four years. Um, and that can get tied into your billing. Um, so some other potential costs come with your co-ops. If you needed additional uniforms, um, most of the time students don't or they buy them off of outgoing seniors. And um, merit scholarships range anywhere from, um, for out-of-state students, $8,000 to $15,000 a year. Um, for in-state students, they're one to $4,000. Um, we also have need-based aid available and we have a multitude of scholarships available for returning students. Um, so once you're on campus and enrolled and you're underway within your program, you might find um, scholarships that are engineering specific or um, emergency management specific, all different things. So definitely keep your eye out. I always tell students when you see something from student financial services, open it, um, you know, don't just delete it because it's one of those emails that's, you know, says to students at maritime.edu, open it. A lot of times they're, they're trying to find students to apply for scholarships um, and you should apply for anything and everything that you might be eligible for. Sea Science and Leadership is a summer program that we run for our high school students. Um, so it will be coming up in this summer. The registration just opened this month. Um, for rising juniors and seniors, gives a taste of life at the academy. Um, there are activities related to the different majors. So you might do firefighting, might do water survival. You'll do um, sometimes some ropes challenges, um, small boat handling, and then a bunch of different like icebreakers and leadership trainings as well. This year, we are hoping to be able to offer it in some sort of in-person capacity. Of course, that is um, all a little bit up in the air, depending on what happens with COVID. So even if we are able to host it in person, we will also be having a virtual option. So those two things are up on the website if anybody is interested. And then last but not least, um, this is my information. So um, if you wanted to you know, take a quick photo of it, if you had any questions that you, you didn't wanna ask in the question and answer, um, you wanna mull it over and, and shoot me an email, that's absolutely fine. Um, we're a very different school. So if you're looking at you know, Massachusetts Maritime Academy, a lot of times students are looking at the other state maritime academies. Um, you can't go wrong when you're looking at a college, regardless of maritime or not, you wanna make sure it's a great fit for you. So um, ask any of the questions that you might have because it is our job and, and my job to make sure that you have all of the information that you need to make a well-informed decision um, about where you might be spending the next four years. So please don't hesitate to reach out at any point. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And students, we, we've got some time. So just in case, if you have any questions, you've still got a couple minutes to go ahead and send those through the Q&A. Um, but it doesn't look like we've had any yet. So I will go ahead and kind of start closing us. But if any questions come in, um, we can absolutely get those answered for you. So um, just a few little housekeeping things as we are wrapping up here. I'll go ahead and share my screen now again. Um, we are you know, so glad that you've joined us. And we hope that if um, this was your only session or if you've attended um, a great deal of sessions this evening. We hope that you've gotten a lot of really good, valuable information. As you exit this webinar, there's going to be just a really quick survey. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, that just kind of lets StriveScan know how this fair went for you and, and helps us as we plan future events. There are additional sessions happening on later dates that you can sign up for, and then we will have these recordings available um, at strivescan.com slash cache so that you can see exactly what, um, you know, what maybe you missed or get some more information from some schools that you're interested in or rewatch one of the presentations that you attended. So um, as we're not having any questions coming, we'll go ahead and wrap up the session. So thank you so much to Callie with um, uh, Massachusetts Maritime Academy, and thank you so much, students for joining us and we will see you soon. Stay safe and have a good evening.